Hi, my name is Julia. Thank you so much for joining. Today, we are going to be accessing that limitation that we might have in our head that says that we're not flexible or that we can't get into yoga because insert self dialogue and today we're going to be showing and demonstrating some easy ways to get into some postures with using a chair or other household items i also would love to introduce sophie who's here today and the first posture that we're gonna do is just going to be a nice arm over the back of the chair so you can find yourself where you're able to barely touch if you lean over and you're going to make your feet into these parallel, I call them whenever you learn how to ski, you wanna make not pizzas, but french fries. And pretend that this nice mat is like a box that's the container. Obviously I'm hungry. So we're gonna inhale the arms up through center. Take a deep breath, feel this expansiveness. Oh, soften the shoulders and exhale over. Wrap your hands onto the back of the chair. Maybe widen out your feet to mat with distance and let the body hollow out. You might feel this nice pull of your thighs, pull up towards your hips. You might bend into the knees. You can feel the inhales deepen, which is oh so many reasons why we do yoga. And as we deepen our breath, that can alleviate stress that can alleviate all the symptomatic feelings that reside in our body that really stem from this mental needing to have to do it all. So as you're here, empty out that self-dialogue of cannot or having to do everything. And maybe shake your head yes, shake your head no. Feel the belly pull up and in, release the roof or the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. And maybe smile and lift the corners of your mouth and slowly roll. As you do so, maybe bend into the knees a little bit. And we're going to do that one more time. So go at your own pace, your own breath. Inhale the arms up. Maybe your legs are already out wide. And you have that french fry alignment with your feet so that your toes are facing the same direction as your heels. And you can bend into the knees and sweep the arms up, stretch up, soften the shoulders, pull the belly button back, shoot the tailbone down in between the legs. And then as you exhale, you fold over, place your hands on top of that nice chair, back of the chair and then allow your head and neck to go. One thing to note about this is that this is very much the similar shape of your downward dog if you were on your mat without the chair. So you want to adopt those same fundamental principles of your downward dog. So maybe micro bending into the elbows, leaving the shoulders and the neck, and then maybe bending a little deeply into the knees. And you should be feeling this nice sensation of your back of your hamstrings and also the glutes or your booty wrapping into your lower back. And as you would in your downward dog, as you would lift the hips up towards the sky and soften the belly, you can do that here too. And inhale and exhale, broadening the shoulders. And this time, instead of wheeling back up, you're also in that halfway lift. Thanks, Sophie. <laughs> and then gently you can place your hands down and bring your hair and your head down and maybe allow any distractions that may occur to let go and be in the present moment. That's why we have pets, right? And begin to slowly bend into the knees and slowly roll up. Yeah. And then bring the shoulders up towards the ears, soften the shoulders. And now, thank you, Sophie, for moving. We're just going to gently move and rotate this chair. All right, a little bit to where we can bring it facing ourselves. And this is a nice opportunity to, I'm going to actually bring this a little bit closer. So while you set your chair up facing you, make sure that all four corners are onto the mat to really create a nice stable foundation. Be sure not to use rollers and then also have like maybe carpeting or a mat there for the base. As we have the chair facing us now, 
We can make our feet hip width distance apart and pull all 10 toes away and then gently place them down, solidifying and grounding the inner arch and rooting into all four corners of your feet. Stack your hips over your ankles and heels and your shoulders over your hips. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Take a deep breath in, let it go and bellow down into your belly and then exhale, bring your hands through heart center. Bring the left leg in towards the midline and then reach that right leg up like it's on a box, flex those toes back towards the knee, soften the shoulders, feel this nice stretch on the hip and place the right arch onto the front side of the chair. Here where it's important to focus on is that this left leg is rooting. You wanna keep all of this side in one straight line. So you, as you begin to hinge forward into this nice lunge, it might be the tendency of this heel to lift, which is great why we have this back part of the chair. So as we lean forward and get really into our hips, you can come high up onto those heels and toes, but really think of this as all one unit, one plane shifting forward and back. So it's not this dumping in or moving into this chair-like posture. It's about finding the sensation into your hips as you internally rotate this left thigh and internally rotate this right thigh and feel this nice elongation onto your side body on the left side. If it feels good to reach this left arm out and then maybe even hinge it over to the side to get a side body stretch, feel free to do whatever feels good and then exhale it back down. Take a moment here. This is the same exact posture as your high lunge or even maybe your warrior one with your foot and your heel glued down to the mat behind you. As you begin to come out of the posture, you can even bring your heel of your right leg to just get this nice little recalibration and get a back hamstring stretch, kind of like a half splits, but we'll go into that a little deeper. But what I'd like for us to do is just bend slightly and then pivot onto the left foot. You can outreach that right leg and reach those arms up and be here. This is very much like a tree pose or with your toe out wide, coming into a wide legged, almost extension on the side, but feel really good and strong in the left side of your body. And then you can bend into the right leg. And as you hinge forward, this is like your warrior too. You just are using this chair as additional support. This left foot is to a parallelness of your back of, the, of your mat or a 90 degree angle and allow the hips to move down towards the floor rather than over this left back leg or way protruding over to the right. Find an equal balance that you can lift all 10 toes away from whatever it is that they're using to ground and then inhale the arms up through center and then maybe reach this arm elbow down to side angle, getting a stretch from the outside left side of your body. Noticing if you're crunching into the right side, suck it all in and then extend. Here we go, maybe look up towards those fingertips and then back through center. Elongate that leg again for one final little pyramid S style expression and then gently come out. Bring this knee to close like a book. If you'd like to work on a stabilizing tree pose, do that as your pit stop, bus stop number two or three. Soften the shoulders and then gently relax that right leg down. Shake it out, move some energy into those glutes. You might be feeling it in your hips and then face the chair again and we can proceed to the left side. So same thing, I always love to inhale the toes up, feel the belly pull up and in towards the rib cage, soften the shoulders, lower the toes, big toes, sealing in our groundedness. Then inhale the arms up through center, soften the shoulders, and then exhale the hands down through the heart space. Feel the thumbs into the heart as we begin to inhale the left leg up through center, and then place the left arch onto the chair. Keep all of this in one plane, so as you begin to hinge forward, you feel this nice little lunge, and then you can outreach the hands towards the back of your chair, and if your back of your chair is lower or higher, just proceed with any type of modification that you need. Maybe that means bringing the arch maybe towards the middle of your mat, or middle of your chair, rather, and then softening the shoulders. Do whatever 
by using these kind of prop sizes that suits your practice best. And then come high up onto your toes, hinge the hip forward, you'll be feeling it on the back of your calf. Yep, I do. And then as you begin to slowly come out and settle down that heel, you can begin to elongate this left leg. Square the hips towards the chairs. If you are facing it, pull the belly button down and, and then back towards the spine, square off the hip. And then as you're ready, you can pivot onto the right heel. And if you need to bend that knee to protect it, please do. Flex those left toes, open up. Inhale the arms up, and then maybe bring them over to the side. Side body stretch on the right side. It feels so good to open up that shoulder and look over a little bit past your fingertips into your big thumb. And then inhale back up through center. Allow yourself to regain balance and stability and then bend into the left knee and then kind of hinge the hips forward like you would in your warrior two. The nice thing about these chairs and these props that we have in our home is that we're getting that same sensation. We're activating the same muscles. It's just we're bringing the floor up to meet us rather than us dumping into those maybe problem areas that might feel a little confrontational. Another great thing of that downward dog variation with our chair, if you have wrist issues or if you feel that you kind of need an alternative of not being so rooted into the floor, these are nice, upright, easy, assisted postures and poses. So feel good and strong into your warrior two. Begin to lift up and maybe straighten out that leg again. Maybe as you sweep here, you come into your side angle by bringing the left elbow in and opening it up and then bringing this right side open again. And this left elbow just reinforces opening up this left knee. Look up towards your fingertips again and then back through center. And that might just give some nice extra roomy additions to your side body. And you can begin to outstretch, straighten this left leg. Stack the hips forward towards the side, softening the shoulders. And then as you bend into it just a little bit, you can close the leg or the knee like a book and then come into a tree variation like you did on the opposite side. Just make sure that the heel of your left foot is somewhere plugged in, not on the knee, but above or below. So for bus stop number one, kickstand the heel, recalibrate the hips towards the side, Feel good and steady. You might be feeling some shakes in the upper part of your legs and glutes. Release and then tighten. And then if you'd like to move further, bus stop number two would be here. And bus stop number three as you flex those toes back towards the knee could be here. And then allow yourself to feel stable on the back right left leg. Or back right leg, there we go. And then as you want, you can close the leg like a book. Shake it out, maybe shimmy, do what you need. And for our final getting into our chair facing here in front of us, we're going to do the half Hanuman half splits. We kind of touched on it briefly earlier before, but I really want to show you some just nice variations. You can bend the knee, but make sure your feet are facing the chair too. Remembering that French fry analogy, bending into the knees deeply and inhaling, reaching the arms up. This time as we stack our hips and place our knee onto the box, soften the shoulders and pull the belly button back towards the spine, push the heel into the chair. And this is bus stop number one. You should be already feeling this like, this sucking and pulling up into the hip, softening the shoulders. And then as you like, you can begin to kind of reach. Oh my gosh, it's almost like, I feel like, this is like when you're watching a horror movie and you're like, I need to hold someone's hand and you can like kind of reach. And if you need, you can bring your hands down towards the front. So feel this right hip wanting to graze towards that chair, but then pulling it back, using those muscles, sucking the belly in, flexing the toes. Oh my goodness. You should be feeling it on the back sides of your knee. You're just strengthening these ligaments that really help prevent and protect yourself from ACL, LCL, MCL tears, even some like kind of hernia stuff in your hip flexor. And then you can bend into the right leg again, come forward, maybe bend both knees, Ugh. and then gently release. 
bringing the legs back and then maybe shooting out that leg back behind you, leveling off the hip, bringing it back and pedaling it out. Whew. If you'd like to flow first, just a, like a very vinyasa style-esque of sweeping the arms up, exhaling, folding forward. The nice thing here is when you halfway lift, you have your chair, you can feel very much similarly this shorter stance of that back of the chair downward dog variation, right? And then you can broaden the chest and breathe into the middle part of your back, your upper back, and then drop the head and neck and slowly come up into a ragdoll. Oh, my toe like that. And then inhale, sweep the arms up. Stack the left leg onto a box. Outreach the heel into the middle of the chair. And as you exhale, you hinge at the hip and you fold forward and reach for the back so you can feel it into the hip and the glute. So as you're reaching, you're like, oh, this is intense. Back of my knee. Okay, it's chatting. This internal thigh of my right leg is chatting too. And then you can place the hands onto the back of, or the front side of the chair and you still might be feeling those sensations just as you inhale. I might be talking fast. Exhale, see if you can soften and quiet that little voice inside your head that this is too much and you're not capable and see if you can test those cannot phrases in your head. And then notice that the body kind of lets go on its own. It's like, okay, we're not dying here. And notice that that can be adjusted all over the body. And as you slowly bend into the left leg, come high up onto the back right toes, and bend into both knees, Whee! and bring that left leg back. Maybe you fold forward, and come all the way up. Feels good, maybe curtsy, <sighs> yeah. Ooh, and then come to facing the chair again, however you'd like. Okay, as we begin to get into our legs and you feel the blood flow rushing through, I'm going to go ahead and take a gentle seat on this chair. I welcome you to do the same or to take a Shavasana where you're sprawled out onto the mat and reaping all that nice juicy goodness of your movement. And I wanna share a nice, secret that I tell all my students about flexibility. The secret that I tell all my students is that flexibility is not merely about the body. The mind has so much to play and to do with it. The mental hemisphere is often the thing that is our limitation that tells us what we can and cannot do, but really the breath, the actual physical breath of breathing in the postures really opens the floodgates of the limitations that we set and we place upon ourselves. So here in yoga, with myself or any other place that you choose to have movement, if you think that you cannot, you cannot. And if you think that you can, you can. Just when you can, I invite you to breathe through it and take it one step at a time. You are enough, you are whole, and all the things that you seek outside yourself are well within your grasp. So I invite you to take your time to breathe and to meet me back here whenever you're able. I hope that you come back to this video and reference it as many times as you'd like so that when you come into these stretches and there might be a point of confrontation that you can breathe through that and that you can feel a sense of calm and confidence and peace at the end of your practice rather than the contrast of how you began your practice and came to your mat or your chair, whatever it is that you are using. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next time. We at Wellness Plus specialize in all things health and wellness ranging from yoga and fitness to massage and ASMR. Whether you are looking to target specific areas of tension or want to enhance your general self-care routine, we provide the tools you need to feel better, look better, and live better. We have courses for every level, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro. Our courses provide a wide range in difficulty to accommodate your evolving flow. Welcome back to Yoga with Jess. We are going to break down some really essential postures. We are going to rock out with some of the most essential ab exercises that you need to have the abs that you've always dreamed of. I've blended techniques to help you connect with students and you can be a rock star teacher. Wellness Plus is available on your phone, tablet, or TV. Join Wellness Plus today and get your first seven days free.
Thank you.